What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode with Danny Acosta here with, not again, with me, yours truly. And today's guest, guess who it is, guys? You get to spend more time with myself. Nobody better to spend time with today. But honestly, we're going to have a really good show today. We're going to be talking a little bit about a motivational story, something that I had an experience about two weeks ago as of the day of this recording, taking disappointments into opportunities. We're also going to be talking about a birthday story, and we're going to be ending off with some information on my audiobook and how to get your free copy. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. All right, guys, so I want to talk to you guys a little bit about uh, something that happened recently. But before we get started, make sure that you guys leave your comments down below. Subscribe and let us know what do you guys think about this episode and what kind of questions do you have? Are there some things that you're going through right now that are discouraging? I want to share a story with you. So as you guys know, I graduated with my master's in social work. Awesome. From Salem State University. I actually did my commencement speech there and I'll make sure to put that link down below so all of you guys can check that out. And uh, it was a great experience, but uh, we're not here for that right now, right? We're here to tell you guys how can you take from disappointments into experiences and creating them into opportunities. So recently, I went to a place, I won't name the place quite, but uh, I was looking for an outpatient clinician job. I'm looking for a new job. As you guys know, I think it's a time to move into the next chapter of my career. Well, I'm getting ready. I do my resume. I do this and that, right? I apply for the job. I'm very excited. You know, as, um, as you go through school, a lot of times you hear about what are some opportunities that are available for, in my case, for social workers, yeah? And I've done a little bit of everything in social work. I've done some advocacy. I've done some one-on-one -on -one mentoring. I even did therapeutic mentoring for my internship. And I was like, you know, I really want to go into a hospital setting and help youth. I want to go into a place where I can help youth one-on-one. -on -one. And I was like, well, outpatient clinicians, not necessarily within the hospital, but I'm going to be able to help youth. So I get ready, right? I get all sharp. I get dressed up. Everything's going great. I'm in prayer. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to crush this interview. But something inside of me was like, you know, um, is this for me? Have you ever had that feeling? Is this for me? Ask the person next to you, is this for me? Like this podcast, is it for you? I don't know, but uh, I think it is. So let's see. And so what ended up happening, I did my first interview first. It was on Zoom, right? And by the way, if you do an interview on Zoom, guys and girls, look sharp. Make sure you look good, look presentable, because you're going to be treated the way you present yourself, right? And so be professional about who you are and what you want to transcend. So I do my interview on Zoom. Everything goes great. We crushed it, guys. Absolutely. Well, then we are getting an email and it tells us we are ready for you to come in and do the clinical interview. And I said, okay, here I am. I'm breathing. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Am I going to meet like Dr. Phil? Is he going to interview me? I don't know. Oh my goodness. And so far, so good. I'm like, okay, I'm going to pray. It's going to go well. I'm going to trust God, right? And I'm, pe I'm at peace. I'm relaxed. And then the interview comes about. And I drive all the way out there. Yes, for you guys that are wondering, I am completely blind. And when I say I drive, I know a lot of you guys know I'm kidding. But uh, I turn on my GPS. <laughs> and if I'm driving the car, please get out of the way or be very worried about me. Uh, but no, I was not driving. I took a lift there. And I get there. And as soon as I get there, I just like, even on the way there, I felt this vibe in my heart. Like, mm, I don't know, but I know that I have to do this. What does the Bible say? The Bible said, um, seek and you will find, knock, and the door shall be open. Ask, and it shall be given to you. I'm knocking on doors, guys. I'm asking around. I'm not stopping. I'm relentless on my pursuit to the new chapter in my career. Well, I walk in there, ready to crush it, right? And I start the interview. And it's going okay. It's going well. But then it gets to the part about how much experience do I have working in a one-on-one -on -one clinical setting and how independent am I with making clinical choices? And this is where it hit me hard. Have you ever been to an interview where they tell you, we're looking for someone with experience? Oh my gosh. Look at yourself in the mirror and said, say, you are experience. 
Tell yourself, I have the experience that I need. And if I don't, I'm going to get it, right? And so I'm in there and I'm trying to play it off like, you know, not lying, obviously, but I'm being honest, right? And I'm saying, you know, I do have this and I do that and the other. Because I was telling her, um, you know, one of the things that I do as a therapeutic mentor is that I have to lean into our clinician, yeah? That's part of doing therapeutic mentoring with youth. You have to lean into your clinician because you're making choices together as a team. And in this particular choice, we make choices together together as a, what they call CRA, Child Requiring Assistance. And for those of you don't, that don't know what a CRA is, it's usually a court-ordered status on an individual, usually in elementary, middle, or high school, who has a lot of behavioral issues, they're running away from home, and so forth, right? And so I have to lean into my clinician because she's part of the CRA team. We create diversion plans, um, youth diversion plans for our youth. So I tell her all of this and she said, you know, Danny, we're really looking for somebody that has more clinical independence in making decisions and has more experience with outpatient as an outpatient clinician. I'm like, well, I understand, but what are the steps that I can take to get there? And she looks at me like I have a billion heads. She's like, well, typically we get our interns. And in the back of my head, I'm like frustrated, right? Like, well, then what am I doing here if I'm not an intern? And you know I'm not an intern, right? And I'm like, well, uh, who else do you get? Well, we typically look for people that have some years of experience. And I'm like, um, I don't have that. What would you suggest would be a good path for me to get there? So she mentioned, you know, intensive care coordinator. This is all nerd talk for like other positions, right? Intensive care coordinator, um, student assistance partner, or program, stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, okay, that's cool. And I just felt crushed. I felt destroyed. I felt distraught. I felt discouraged, right? I felt very, very unmotivated. And, you know, I kind of used the last few seconds to try to convince her like, well, you know, I think if you give me a shot and this and that and blah, 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 but I do it with confidence. Right? When you go to an interview, you want to go with confidence. Yeah? You want to go and crush it. Well, it happened, and she's like, uh-huh. And in the back of my head, I'm like, yeah, that's my key. I need to leave. All righty. Well, thank you very much. I'll be out of my way, and um, thank you for your time. Okay? And I leave. And I'm in the car, and you guys probably saw this. If you guys seen me on Instagram, you can go to Instagram.com slash or follow me at Danny Acosta Official. That's also in the description below, guys. So make sure you follow us there. But I did an IG video, and I was talking about this story, right? And I won't go into that. You guys can check that out for yourselves. But after that video, I still felt like very destroyed in my heart. And I remember telling a friend, they asked me, so how was the interview? And I said, it was a disaster. Think about that word, a disaster. Usually we think of natural disasters. Oh, this was a very natural disaster. I was naturally not a good fit. But let me tell you something about a natural disaster. There is a supernatural intervention that begins to occur that you have to believe that there's a better opportunity out there. See guys, I could have seen it as, I'm not fit for this. Why did I get my master's? This is dumb. I don't deserve a better job. I should have done another path. Blah, 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 blah. Right? But it's my choice. And I chose to say, you know what? Yes, this is difficult. But I'm going to use this opportunity that could have been a disaster to make it a door for more opportunities. Because that door began to open more opportunities for me. And guess what? Since that day, I applied to three more jobs within the next 72 hours because we don't give up. It is time that we begin to knock on doors. So I don't know what disaster you just went through while you're watching this, but I believe this is for you. Whatever you're going through right now, I want to let you know, turn your disaster into an opportunity. Turn your disaster into an opportunity to change your life, to start a new chapter. So what if there's conflict in your life? There is no great story told without conflict, right? So guys, with that said, remember, even if it is a disaster, it can become something beautiful. Turn your disaster into an opportunity. We'll be right back and we'll be talking a little bit about a birthday story that I've probably never told before, but it is about to change your life. We'll be right back.
Awesome, guys. So another thing I want to talk to you guys about today is birthday. Oh, my gosh. Birthday stories. I love them. You guys can't have enough of them. And I don't like cake. So please don't buy me a cake. Uh, if you do want to buy me anything, buy me a house. How about that? <laughs> we will blow the candles off that house, guys. It'll be awesome. We'll probably blow the roof off the house, too, if we celebrate together. Um, but on a serious note, right? So birthdays. Uh, why don't you let me know what is your birthday? I mean, are you guys, uh, what is your birthday? What is your social security number? What is your credit card number tell me, please send me your passwords as well i think that would be an amazing idea uh please don't do that especially in the comments um but one of the things that i want to talk to you guys about is a birthday story that will forever be in the depths of my heart and birthday stories go a really long way some of us have very memorable stories some of us if you're like harry potter have a story that is probably very depressing until a giant shows up at your door uh, but I, my story isn't quite like that. My story is actually very, very different. And so if you're feeling emotional, if, if you feel like, oh my gosh, I've been looking for like a tear-jerking story, here it is. I hope you guys are ready. This happened a few years ago. I'm pretty sure it was before 2018, somewhere between 2015 and 2018, around that. Let's call it 2018 for now. And it was my birthday. And so... Before this, by the way, I had gone to preach. As you guys know, I do a lot of youth ministry and I preach in different churches. I preach my testimony, faith, not sight. Yeah. And so I was preaching my uh, testimony at a church. And in the midst of that, I prayed for this woman. Now, I never met this woman. Mind you, I'm completely blind. At the time, I still had chronic kidney failure. And I prayed for this woman. Well, a couple weeks later, she calls me and she says, Danny, you don't know this, but when you prayed for me, I was actually going through a lot of kidney um, function or kidney failure. And I was going through a really hard time in my life. And they told me that I was going to be put on dialysis soon. Well, when you prayed for me, I went to do my labs that week. And guess what, Danny? My kidneys are completely fine. Praise the Lord. Oh my gosh, that was super awesome. And I was like, oh my gosh, praise God. I'm so happy for you. Well, it didn't end there. Then she tells me, Danny, what are you doing this upcoming week on this particular day, which was June 5th? And I said, well, actually, it's my birthday. Why? What's up? Oh, I don't know if you're going to want to because it's your birthday. But I want to ask you, do you want to come with me? Because I feel like God laid in my heart that if you were able to pray for me, you could pray for this woman. So there was this young woman who lived in Cape Cod. Well, this young woman was in her last days. She had cancer. It had spread throughout her whole body. And I said, you know what? Yes, it's my birthday. But the greatest gift that I was ever given was life. The greatest gift that I was ever given was Jesus to come into my life and give me a second opportunity. And so I said, I would love nothing else than to go and pray for this woman. So they picked me up from Lynn and we drive all the way to Cape Cod. It was a pretty long drive. I'd never been in a, in a drive that long, at least in Massachusetts. So we get there and I walk in. There's people mourning already. There were a lot of people crying in there. I was like, oh my gosh, this is really, really heavy, right? Really intense. And I walk in there and there's a bed that's very low to the ground. And it's this woman who has cancer and her husband. But her husband had to step outside. He was very emotional. It was weighing in very heavily. He had been going through this for years, right? Now, mind you, this woman was very, very young. I believe she was 22. and Or 21, I think she was. Yeah, 21. And I'm praying for her. I meet her. By the way, I say hi to her. And she says, nothing. She can't talk. She's so weak. So I get down on my knees. I put anointed oil in my hands. And I grab her hand and her hand, guys, it literally felt like, you know, those, those skeletons that you find in like science class in college or in high school, it felt like I was holding that. Now I'm not being rude. I just, I'm wanting to give you a vivid description of what it felt like because I'm completely blind. So I see the world through my senses, especially touch and I hold her hands and they're so fragile. And I hold her in my hands and I'm praying for her. And people are praying. And then they put this song and it's very emotional, right? This song, and, and, and it's in Spanish, but I'll translate a little bit of the lyrics into, into English. And it says, 
What can I offer but a heart broken into a thousand pieces? And I was just reminded of this moment. And I looked in her direction because she could barely, barely move. And I told her, you know, you're going to be healed. A miracle is going to happen in your life. And I believe it. I believe it. And I'm so proud of you. You're so strong. And I know God loves you. And as your brother and you're in Christ, I want to tell you that I love you too, dude. You're going to make it. You're going to get out of this. And so I get off my feet, right? And, and we, we, we're, we're ready to go. And the music kind of subsides a little bit. And we want her to rest because she's very, very overwhelmed and tired, right? And right before I leave and right before I get off my, off, uh, off my knees, I get a little flask of anointed oil. And I slip it into her hands and I tell her, I want you to have this. It's a gift. And I want you to anoint your body every day and pray. And I get up and we're wrapping up and we're making our way to the door. And I'm leading the parade, right? And I put my hand on the doorknob. And then I hear a voice behind me. And I hear, hey, Danny. And immediately my eyes open wide. And I turn around and I'm like, yeah. And it's this girl. She says, Danny, happy birthday. God bless you. Thank you so much for praying for me. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to just leave everything and run in her direction and give her a hug and say, thank you. This has been one of the most special and beautiful birthday gifts I've ever had. So no, I don't need a cake. No, you don't need to get out of your way and buy me a house. But sometimes just saying thank you is sufficient. Go thank the people that you love. Go thank the people that you've made a sacrifice for. Not because you did it for them, but because they allowed you into their lives when they most needed you to be. Go thank people for the honor and the privilege of allowing you to be there for them. Go thank your parents. Maybe you say, Danny, I don't have parents. You know, I mentor a lot of young gentlemen in the community. A lot of them don't have their fathers. A lot of them don't have their mom. A lot of them are going through very difficult situations. But we all have someone we can call right now. And if you don't, I want to take a leap of faith here. And I want to tell you, message me. Message me right now. Send me a message on Instagram, Facebook. Email me. You can go to my website, dannyacosta.com, and find all my social media. I want to hear you out. If you have a story to tell, I want to listen to you. Because for me, it would be a privilege, and I would love nothing more than to be able to spend some time with you and tell you that you're so amazing, that you're beautiful, and that you're worthy of being loved. Guys, with that said, we'll be right back, and we're going to be talking a little bit about our audiobook. Thank you. Awesome, guys. So, whew, take a deep breath because that was emotional. Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah, guys, I mean birthdays, right? So, they're really, really great. And for those of you wondering, uh, why don't you leave in the comments down below before I tell you guys my actual age, right? Leave your comments down below. How old do I look? Please have some grace. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm actually, let's see, I'll give you guys some time. Five, four, three. Da -da 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 -da. Are you sure you guys are ready for it? I don't know. Two, one. I'm actually 32 years old. Um, I feel great. Uh, somebody at church actually told me on Sunday that I look 25, which I will receive. Thank you very much. You know who you are. And um, gotcha. No, uh, yeah, but I am 32. Uh, so, audiobook. Oh my gosh, guys. Did you know that we made our book into an audiobook? Now, some of you guys may know, some of you guys may not, but I did publish a book in 2022. It's called Blindly Painting Words of Love, A Poet's Adventure. And it's all about romantic poetry. So if you love rom-coms, if you love the cheesy stuff, you know, if you like movies like that and you're a sucker for it like I am, if you like The Notebook, uh, P.S. I Love You, um, 10 Things I Hate About You, 
or 10 things you love about Danny. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> if you like any movies like that, make sure you check out our book. And um, it's, it's really cool, guys. It's, it's been a big, big privilege. And as you, most of you might or might not know, all the royalties, every single penny that has come from that book, guess what? We've used it and we've donated it to all families that are immigrants who have kids with disabilities. It's been a great opportunity. We've helped families in Guatemala, in El Salvador. We're helping families. We're looking forward to helping families in the Caribbean. We've also helped families in Mexico, all across Massachusetts, even in the state of Maine. And we're going for more. And recently, we're working on a project. I'll probably update you guys at some point in the future um, where we're actually even supporting missionaries. And so this has been a really, really big privilege for us. Well, in the process of that, for the one year anniversary, I was like, you know, I could do a big celebration, but I also want to provide this book to make it accessible for people like myself who are visually impaired or are legally blind. Well, it doesn't just come as text. I wanted to make an audiobook, and not just any audiobook. I wanted to make an audiobook worth listening to. An audiobook that makes you feel like the butterflies and the jiggly wigglies, <laughs> right? Um, and so we made an audiobook, and we, I just want to give a shout out to our bro Abner Garcia of Heartbeat Studio. I want to give a shout out to our sister Alejandra. Uh, she's been a great, great support of this audiobook. Both of them actually did the Spanish version of the audiobook. And then I also want to give a shout out to our bro, uh, Pastor Aaron Rios, who did the English version along with Alejandra um, for the audiobook. It was really great. And Abner Gar Gar Garcia, he also did the music for the audiobook, which was a huge privilege to have. So guys, you guys know all the sacrifice and the time that you guys donated and gave so that we can make this audiobook happen. Well, let me tell you guys a little bit about an experience making an audiobook. Um, it was fun. It was very, very fun. I don't want to get too into the details of how to make a book, but I do want to get into a little bit of the details on how to make an audiobook. Okay? <clears throat> so with the audiobook, it was really, really fun. It was great. Uh, one of the things that you want to keep in mind if you're going to make one is you want to write out a script. Okay? You have to literally write in a script who is saying what. So I'll take an example right now really quick from the book. Um, there's a poem. It's called Skipping Off into Blue Moon Eclipses. Yes, it's as crazy as it sounds. Skipping off into blue moon eclipses. And this poem, it's actually a poem where two people are talking to each other. They're walking in the snow. They're both freezing cold. But at the end of the story, the guy asks the girl to marry him. Beautiful story. And I won't tell you what she says, but uh, why don't you go find out for yourself? And you're like, Danny, but I haven't gotten the book but I'm really interested in the audiobook. Well, before I let you guys go today, I'm gonna let you guys know how you guys can get a free version of the audiobook. It's gonna be awesome. And I'm looking forward to giving that away for you guys because you guys deserve the best. You guys are like family to me. You guys are the reason why I'm able to do what I do. And also a lot of you have even left um, book reviews on the Amazon page for our books. So uh, thank you guys for that as well. And a lot of the feedback. And just to give you a comment on one of the feedback that I got, there was a, a beautiful girl, this, this great friend of mine. She's just so great. Um, she said, Danny, when I read your book, for the first time, I felt loved. For the first time, I felt beautiful. I felt like I was worthy of being loved and being in a relationship. So thank you. And I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe my book could do that. <laughs> but, uh, but it was great. You know, I really prayed about this book. I prayed about what this book could do. So not only is it helping people directly, um, you know, like the readers and so forth, but it's also helping people indirectly by other people gifting it or, um, as I said, right, the donations that we're able to give thanks to all of your support. Um, so with that said, the audiobook, right? So in this audiobook, there was a part where there's a girl talking to a guy. Well, in parentheses, I have to literally write out in a script who is saying what. So I'll take the English version, for example. There's a narrator, right? And then there's a girl talking to the guy, and then there's a guy talking back to the girl. But the narrator and the voice of the guy are the same person. In this case, it was Aaron Rios. Then the girl voiced by or narrated by Alejandra, and the music in the background 
also composed by Abner Garcia. Yeah. And so one of the beautiful things about being able to do this book was being in the studio. Now, some of you guys probably are like, uh, never been in a studio, not really for me. Uh, but let me tell you guys something, dude, there is nothing more fun than being in a studio. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. There are those days where it can feel very prolonged. But then there's those days where it's very exciting, very fun. You get to joke around and stuff like that. Uh, and then it goes by really quick. Yeah. And so one of the things that we were able to talk about while we were there was as the director, I had to tell them, well, Danny, how much emotion do you want? How do you want me to say this? Or do you want me to say it like this? Or should I say it like this, right? You, you have to give these afflections. And so directing both of our narrators um, in the English version, it was really fun. So one of the things I remember telling them was like, do it like you're in love. Do it like you're falling in love for the first time. Do it like you just saw this girl and you absolutely are blown out of your mind. Now, for example, Pastor Aaron Rios, he's married, right? And so I told him, do it as if you just saw your wife for the first time. Like when you're falling in love with her, when you guys just met, right? And, um, and, and it's one of those things that when you're, when you're directing people, you also have to keep in mind, maybe your interpretation is not their interpretation. Sometimes I had to ask them, be, be a little more breathy, right? More like, and then I saw her, right? Instead of, and then I saw her, right? And Aaron Rios, oh my gosh, pastor did an amazing, incredible job. He has a very deep, uh, trebly voice, I would say, uh, very, uh, Morgan Freeman, if you will, um, with a little bit of that Puerto Rican spice in it. Really awesome. Uh, and then Alejandra, oh my gosh, she has such a beautiful voice, guys. She's just one of the most beautiful girls I've ever met, has such a sweet and tender, graceful voice. And, um, who, by the way, is a singer. And if you guys want to know more about her songs, make sure you guys look in the description below. We'll be linking that down as well, okay? Um, but <clears throat> she did a really, really great job. And when you listen to it, um, I'm letting you guys know right now, if you guys are single, you, you might start to fall in love again. You might be inspired. You might be motivated to go and write your poetry, which in all honesty is one of the things that I hope it does do for you. I know that a lot of people out there have a lot of poetry that they want to express, but they feel like, I'm not good enough at poetry. I'm not good enough at being able to express myself on paper. Maybe you're a spoken word artist. Maybe you're uh, a sucker for romanticism like I am. Yeah. And so one of the things that I want to encourage you guys to do is read and reread and reread, even when you're writing the script, because you want to make sure that you memorize it, not literally word for word, but you memorize the emotion you want to transcend. Because there's certain emotion where it's like um, invigorating, right? It's like, and then, you know, but then there's some emotions where it's a lot more graceful, more tender than there's sometimes where it's questionable. It's doubt. Like, and then he, he looked at me and I don't know what he meant by that, right? So what kind of emotion do you want to transcend on your readers or your listeners in this case? Yeah. And so I want to tell you guys how you can get a free copy of this audiobook. So if you came this far, why don't you let me know in the comments down below and let me know, Danny, I'm getting mine today. All you have to do, go to dannyacosta.com. That's D A N Y A C O S T A.com. And where it says that you can subscribe for a newsletter, okay, I promise you it's not going to like flutter and flood your stuff with spam. I'm not that kind of person. If that, I might send you something like once every quarter. In other words, once every three months. But if you send me a message right now through that, and you said, Danny, I'm here for my free audiobook. Just put free audiobook, Danny, and put your name. I would love to add you to our, our email list. And I'll send you a link where you can download your completely free audiobook. And if you have um, the opportunity, why don't you let me know what you thought? I would love to hear your feedback. Maybe leave us a review on Amazon. That would be really, really greatly appreciated. Uh, but be nice, be kind, but be honest as well, right? I think I believe in, um, what is it? Uh, honest criticism, I think is what they call it. Uh, crazy criticism. Uh, but, but, you know, let us know what you think. I think it will be a huge blessing for all of those that are out there that really need some words of encouragement, of affirmation, some words of uh, inspiration. Yeah. Um, 
And if you feel comfortable, why don't you send me some of your work? Maybe send me some poems that you like to read or poems that you've written. I would love to read some of, those, uh, some of that stuff. And I think it'll be a lot of fun. In the future, guys, we are planning to have a little bit more guests. I would love to have some of the narrators that we had on our audiobook. I'm planning to probably do some interviews, whether it's on Zoom or here in person at the studio. I want to give a shout out to Link Community Television for allowing us to have this space to be able to do this recording. I also want to give a shout out to Brother Pedro, who's here right now helping us in the background. He does an amazing job. And guys, if you guys are in Lynn or anywhere in the North Shore, why don't you make sure to check out Link Community Television? They do great things here. They do a lot of uh, production and very beneficial things for not just the link community but i believe for all of massachusetts and also make sure to check us out on on our social media i think it's going to be a really 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 good thing so we'll be right back and remember guys that if you read this audiobook or you want to read the audiobook just go to our website danielcosta.com send us a message there through our newsletter sign up and we'll make sure to send it right to you we'll be right back Awesome, guys. So thank you guys for coming back. Here we are. So we're just going to start to wrap things up right now. We have a lot of social media things going on. You can check us out at daniacosta.com. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on uh, YouTube as well and Instagram. And we have a lot of different things going on in every single one of those platforms. Remember to check out our book. And I do want to update you guys a little bit. I'm currently working on... Oh, this is going to blow your mind. Are you guys ready? Hold on to your uh, whatever you have next to you. Slap whatever on is on your right unless you're driving then please keep both hands on the wheel uh but if you're parked uh maybe slap them twice um <laughs> i'm working on three books right now one of them is a kind of like a autobiography or a memoir if you will um that's the one i'm probably investing the least amount of time in right now but you know that's just something that i have on the back burner the one that I'm spending a lot of time on is another poetry book. This one I'm really, really excited about. Yes, it is some romantic poetry. But guys, let me tell you, when you think one book is great and then you're working on the next one, you just get more and more excited. So I'm working on that. And then, and by the way, we also do our weekly updates on how that writing is going. We are doing it on Facebook posts and soon we'll probably be able to do some on, um, on our YouTube as well. And then number three, we're also doing a short, what they call a novelette. It's a short story, a little bit longer than a short story. It's about 10,000 words or so. And this story, it's a, it's a really interesting book. I won't go into the nitty gritty of it, but think of it this way. It's about man's dark psychology and their temptations. And in the first book, we're going to be talking about, you guessed it, sexual temptation or lust i think it's going to be a really fun uh story to tell uh it's 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 again it's dark psychology so it is a little dark um i would probably hesitate to read it if i'm under 14 uh but if you're over 14 i think it's going to be a great read for all of you and make sure guys that you leave this space and you leave this podcast and this video with a lot of inspiration guys it's been a great great privilege make sure you leave your comments and your questions down below and if you have any ideas of any topics you would like me to touch on why don't you let me know in the comments message me guys it's been a privilege this is daniel costa saying this is daniel costa remember this is not again with me yours truly daniel costa and remember to live by faith and not by sight god bless you guys peace